Hi everyone, this is Amy with Amy Astro here, and I want to talk to you about my next project. I was going to do one of those unboxing videos, but a fellow YouTuber begged me not to do another one of those boring unboxing videos. So, you know what? I'm not. The boxes are going to stay on until I'm ready to install the item. I know you're probably one of the 10% out there who love unboxing videos, but don't worry. I will show you everything I purchased in due time. So let's get started. Alright everybody, so today I wanted to show you what my next project is going to be. You can see an awful lot of stuff here and yes, I am going to build myself a second telescope rig. But I guess first let me introduce you to my new kitten. This one is Oliver. I have a set of brothers here that we adopted from a local shelter, which is a lot of fun. And who knew that kittens could be so much work? They are actually more work than toddlers. I not only have to protect everything that's on the ground, but I have to protect everything that's up high. So they're having a lot of fun with all of my telescope gear. So let's get started here. My next project, I wanted to do some wide field astrophotography. And I wanted to get a little bit wider than what my 102 Explorer Scientific can get me. So I was talking at the star party a couple months ago and a gentleman had this telescope here. It's an AstroTech AT65Q quad and the field flattener is built in inside of it. And he had this scope and he told me that there's terms and conditions to the scope and he gave it to me. And that was the first time I have ever been given a telescope. But let me tell you what the terms and conditions are because this is really a great story. So this telescope was owned by a soldier who was on deployment and is a member of our club. And while he was deployed, he found this telescope for sale online and he was interested in it and was communicating with the previous owner. And what the previous owner did is when he realized that he was active duty and deployed and they were arranging for shipment and stuff, he goes, thank you for your service. No charge. Just give me the address and I will ship it to you. And uh, wow, that is just truly amazing that there are so many people out there that are so generous and do stuff like that. So he has upgraded his scope, of course, you know, like we all do over time. And he is now circulating this scope amongst those in need who need a telescope to use. And uh, right now it's floating around our club and it's never to be sold. It's only to be donated and given to the next person down the line. And uh, if there isn't anybody else in need at that time, then we send it back to our soldier who lives here locally and it was just amazing so uh, thank you so much for your service and thank you for your trust in letting me use this telescope so it's an astrotech it's a 65 millimeter i have a moonlight focuser on it right now and since i've already got the white and the red i've decided to give this scope's name the freedom scope and uh it's going to be color coordinated as red, white, and blue. As you all know, I like to color co coordinate things. So let me tell you about everything that I've been purchasing over the last few months and planning this build. I wanted a rig that was easy to set up, something I could take to my club field that has no power. Um, so I needed low power requirements and um, lightweight because I travel, uh, you know, hour and a half to two hours to the club field and, you know, you're up all night and then you're driving that time all the way back home. You know, you need something that's easy to set up and easy to break down and all that stuff. So I decided to go with a Color Cool camera. And this is the ASI uh, 183 Color Cool. And we're gonna try that just to make life simpler on the processing end of only having to deal with the color images. Now to pair up with this, I decided to try something because I've had color cameras before in light polluted skies and I haven't been really happy with them. So this time I'm gonna team it up with the Altair Astro Tri-Band Filter and hoping this will give me some of the narrow band light that I really enjoy in my nebulas. But since I've got this, I already had this filter. And this is a UHC filter also that I use in light polluted skies. And I think I'm going to take some pictures with both of them on the same target and compare them for y'all one time. So you can just decide which filter works better. 
I do know that there's an L Enhance filter out there that's supposed to work really well. I don't own one, so if you have one that you're willing to let me borrow, I will give it a test drive and we'll compare all three filters and see which one is the best for light polluted skies. So that's what I'm going to do. I have a um, new to me Sirius, Orion Sirius EQ mount here. Uh, another gentleman in the club was selling it. He was upgrading it, so I purchased this off of him. And he had already purchased the ADM uh, replacement head to go on it. So I'll be swapping that out also. Let's see. I have a new mini PC purchased off of Amazon. This one's cool because it has the antenna already built into it. And it also has four USB ports on it. So that will be very helpful. And it also has 12 volt power supply. And this time I'm going to try Pegasus Astro Ultimate Power Box. And that's gonna allow me some power distribution. It's gonna be my USB hub so I won't have to buy one. And it'll also be my dew heater. And I've got a couple of dew heater straps here that we're gonna add also. I've got a couple of Smondi bars. I have a lot of different spacers and things that I've had from previous builds that we're gonna use. And since I'm gonna go Pegasus, I don't need this four point um, power distribution on top of my mount. But I'm still gonna use um, some Anderson power poles with everything. So we'll see how well we can get that to work out. I've got a handle, I've got some various spacers, nuts and bolts to throw everything together. Um, I've got, oops, top fell off. I have a reducer here, 0.5X. But when I was doing some math on a website last night, I realized that that reducer teamed up with this scope. I'm gonna have some undersampling, so it's not really recommended. And I'll show you that math shortly. And um, we'll decide, you know, I may try it just to see what it does. Um, Cause I really want really wide field. So maybe I needed a wider scope, but I love the story with this scope. I am gonna take it out for a spin and uh, get everything I can from it. So. All right, so I've jumped over to my computer here and I just wanted to take a, a quick moment to show you what this telescope is. And it is an AstroTech AT65 EDQ 65 millimeter F6.5 ED quadruple astrograph. Wow, that's a mouthful. All right, so what I wanted to show you here, we were talking about whether or not I could use the 0.5X reducer on it. So I needed to go to the website Astronomics who has this telescope and find out what my focal length was, which is 420 millimeters and my focal ratio is f 6.5 okay so now that i know that i'm going to go over here to astronomy tools and i love this website and i was just curious what can i get with this telescope and the zwo 183 and you see they've got these pull downs here and you can usually find your telescope if you can't you just go to the manual and fill out this stuff individually and add it to their library if you're so inclined. So it's really kind of cool. But I've got my focal length of 420 and the aperture that was already in here was 6.6. .6. It's close enough. And with no reducer, I pulled up Andromeda and I said uh, add to view and it came up with this is what I was going to get with Andromeda. Which oddly enough is not much better than what I can get with my 102 with the 0.8x reducer. So I came over here and I was just playing around with the reducers. And if I put an 8x reducer on here and I add it to my view, I can get this yellow line around so I can get more. But really I wanted more, more. So what I did is I put a 5x reducer in and I added it to the view. And there you go, I get all of Andromeda. And that's what I really wanted to get. And here I'm gonna choose another target. Let's look at the Orion Nebula. And you can see I have all of the Orion Nebula. And I bet you I could even get all the horse head in there, which would be really, really cool. So I wanted a 5X reducer. But let's find out, is a 5X appropriate for me? So I came over back to Astronomy Tools, to their calculators. And I came to the CCD suitability calculator that they had. And I put in my AstroTech, my 420 millimeters, and my camera. And I said my okay, my seeing was 
okay. And it came up, you know, with my pixel sizes and everything. And for this setting without a reducer, it says everything is okay. We're in green. This setup works great for taking pictures. But what if I put an 8x reducer in here? I'm still in the green. I'm still pretty good. But I really wanted that 0.5, so let's go to the 0.5. And I'm in the yellow section. And this tells me the ideal pixel size for OK seeing is 0.67 to 2 inch pixels. It says this combination leads to a slight undersampling. This reduces the influence of guiding errors and improves signal to noise at the expense of the finest details. Okay for most deep sky imaging purposes. So maybe this is okay, but I don't know. I'm going to test and just find out because I really do want that wider field. So this is where I came up with um, the undersampling part and it's called it's on astronomy.tools website. Great website to uh, find out all kinds of cool stuff. You know, and before you purchase a camera, by all means, put your telescope in, the camera you're thinking about, and see what you can catch because not every combination is ideal. If you want wide field, this works out pretty good. But if you wanted something tiny, let's put something tiny on here. Let's go to the dumbbell. All right, that's really tiny. So maybe the AstroTech is okay without any reducers but it'd be even better with the 102. So you've got to think about these things when you're choosing. Now, Pleiades, that fills up everything there. And what else do we got? Oh, the Sunflower Galaxy, that's real pretty. Look at how tiny that little guy is in. So this is how I kind of decide my combination of telescope versus camera. And I know what I want to take a picture of and I have to decide, you know, what combination makes me happy. So let's go back to my project. So let's see, do I have anything else here I want to show you? Oh, these are really cool. These are spacers. They're those aluminum grade ones. I ordered them from ADM. They were sent with a quarter 20 threads all the way through, which is great if you needed that. But I needed to pass a bolt through on my last rig, so I drilled the um, threads out. Works great, super lightweight and inexpensive. And I've got a couple of these uh, dovetails that I had from a previous build or I purchased them off of cloudy nights when I see them come up. And you never know how you want to set up a rig. So I like to have things set up, you know. I like to have a variety of toys, you know, for whatever I can think of. Oh, and my router. My router died recently, so I had to go purchase another one. I need to get this one back online before the next clear night but I don't have any of those in my foreseeable future right now, and it'll probably be after the holidays before I get outside shooting again. But that's okay, I've got lots of projects going on. Um, thank you so much for all those requests for videos. I am working on them. Um, you all are keeping me very busy, which is a good thing, you know. It keeps me out of trouble, hopefully. So this is my next project, and um, I'll be showing it to you in various stages over future videos as I start to build everything. Um, yes, I am probably the cause for some of these clouds, but who isn't? We all have clouds. I am Amy with Amy Astro. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you like this video and you want to see more like this, uh, hit that subscribe button below, hit the like, share it with your Astro friends, and don't forget to hit that alert bell because it lets you know when I upload new Astro related material. I'm always thinking of something. I want to thank you guys for sending me all those requests and ideas and questions. They have been just amazing. Thank you. So I almost forgot. This year I have a 2020 calendar that I am selling. You can find information for this on my Facebook page as Amy Astro. And they have various images that I've taken over the last year. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm selling them for about $25 that's shipped to your home. If you live within the United States, I've found a way that I can ship them to Canada and the UK for about $35. So if you're interested, find me on Facebook or send me a message here through YouTube and I will send one to you. Thank you so much. This is Amy with Amy Astro and I'm wishing you all a very happy holiday season and clear skies. 
See y'all later. Goodbye.